Support for this episode is provided by Pennsylvania College of Art and Design and listeners like you. Welcome to the Linecast. I'm David Moulton. On this episode of the Linecast, Steve Carlson and Jason Mundock from the Woodstove House join us once again to share about some of their upcoming projects. During the first half of the show, Jason shares about Creativity Con, which is a convention for creatives right here in Lancaster City. Really, anybody can come together in this in this format and really get something from it when you get a bunch of creative people together talking about the things that they're passionate about. Then, you know, the opportunity for for inspiration and to really jumpstart your ideas is, is huge. And that's what we wanted to put together to present in Lancaster. Later in the show, Steve goes over some of the responses from last year's 24-hour plays, and we talk a little bit about what's coming up for this year's endeavor. We've tried to reach out to you know, broaden the pool of actors and writers and directors that we had from last year. And a lot of people are back. A lot of people have conflicts and moved away and, and have other things going, so they're not going to be involved. But there are names there that, again, this year, we don't, we don't know who they are. And they have sent us their information, and there's some people with a lot of experience yeah. that, that are interested in doing this project with us. And it's really exciting to see who these people are. And it's going to be like last year. It's, it's, it's fun. Like, hi, I'm Steve. Oh, I, I'm... Yeah, whoever. Whoever. I, you know, and you, you've seen their name in, on our Google Doc, you know, for weeks, and you're just like, you can't even imagine who they are. You know, one of the greatest things that came out of the 24-hour plays the first time we did it, in my opinion, was the relationships that we've developed with folks who were involved with it who we didn't know prior. Enjoy the conversation. Well, welcome back, Steve and Jason. Thanks, David. Thanks for having us. Well, we're going to talk about a multitude of things, uh, Woodstove House related today, but uh, let's start off talking about your big new project you have coming up, Creativity Con. All right, yeah. So Creativity Con um, started as this idea of we, we wanted to get into some educational events around creativity, and we we were we do a lot of performing arts events, uh, theater and concerts, and we've got some ideas for some. Even even crazier, you know, performing arts events where an audience comes and is entertained for a period of time. But we thought it might be interesting to try an event where the people who actually create those events, uh, who make those events happen, the artists themselves would be able to take advantage of something that we did as an audience member. And there's a real uh, wealth of of um, of just people in this area who write about and uh, creativity who or are living creative lives who have figured out ways to monetize, you know, their passion, their creativity in a way that that they can, you know, survive on it or at least it's a big part of their income. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if we could c- tap on some of those people and have them all come together in like a conference format. I mean, I've been to a lot of technology conferences over the years and some very informal ones and some very very formal big conferences and I like the format, you know, of having people present on a topic and network and share and then get some ideas going. So we threw it out there. We came up with sort of a format for a one day conference. We didn't want to bite off more than we could chew and partnered with our friends at the Candy Factory as a great spot to host this this event. And we figured let's start with a one day conference and let's put out a call for presenters and see if anyone's even interested in in speaking at something like this in Lancaster. And the result of that was pretty positive. We had, um, you know, we had more than a dozen people who were interested in speaking and there was some really good presentations that were proposed. Some, some of which were even that we couldn't use because they were maybe too specific to a particular discipline. But we came up with five while we were, we were, you know, there were five proposals that we thought were really strong and, and would really inspire people. Um, so we kind of let that dictate the way the day would look, right? Because we weren't sure exactly what we would get. And, um, it turns out that the result is, it's really a, a, um, kind of a generic, it will be a a generic day in terms of specific creative pursuits. So if I'm an actor, I, I will get something from this. If I'm a writer, I will get something from this. If I'm a musician, I will get something from this. It's not specific to a discipline. Um, but we're calling on a diverse 
group of creatives to pr- bring their ideas. So we have Dr. Amanda Kemp, who's a uh, you know in theater as a playwright, and as the as the founder and artistic director of a theater company. You have Andrew Zahn, who's who was a professional actor, but is also a writer. He just released his first ebook. He he blogs. He writes uh, for companies doing social media. So um, and then we have a, a Potter. Uh, who's also a pastor, and we have a creativity coach, and we have another um, playwright, and so there's a pretty it's a pretty diverse group of people, bringing a variety of experiences, and we're we're thinking that people who are either hobbyists, uh, maybe they've they've been an artist in the past, or they've they've always wanted to write, and they need some jump start. Uh, or a professional creative who just is looking to network with other creatives or students. I mean, really anybody can come together in this in this format and really get something from it when you get a bunch of creative people together talking about the things that they're passionate about. Then, you know, the opportunity for for inspiration and to really jump start your ideas is is huge. And that's what we wanted to that's what we wanted to put together to present in Lancaster. It kind of makes sense if you think about Lancaster and its progression as a creative place, as a place for artists. It makes sense that you'd have something like this. It's just one more piece to the overall creative puzzle, if you will. Yeah, yeah. That helps kind of enliven the space for creatives. It inspires them. And, you know, hopefully it'll draw some folks from out of town and then they can go back and, and take some of what, they, what they've gleaned from the conference with them. But I think it makes a lot of sense for Lancaster to have something like this. Okay, well, I'm, I, I want to start off maybe from a, uh, a, a different angle with my questions here, and and I've got some challenging challenge questions. Sure, for you. yeah. So the first is I work in in kind of a training department at my job, and and um, one of the things that we learn is that people generally retain information from the first twenty minutes, and when you go over twenty minutes of something. Like it becomes more difficult for people to retain the information that they sure. want. Not that they're, disinter- they're disinterested or anything. It's just more difficult to do that. What kind of things throughout the day do you have to break up the process so it doesn't feel like learning or um, monotonous? Well, the first thing is that the, the sessions themselves are 60-minute sessions, but the presenters have been um, – have been directed or guided to, to to really put together a presentation that lasts about forty minutes. So the last twenty minutes of each presentation is is um, geared toward open discussion. So we plan to to really open the floor at that point. Some of the presenters are talking about ha- making their sessions really interactive throughout. Others will probably be presenting thirty or forty minutes of information first because that goes pretty quickly mm-hmm. if you're speaking. You know, <clears throat> if you're speaking in that capacity, uh, then there's breaks between each session. So, you know, there's you can get up and stretch and move around for 10 or 15 minutes be- between each session. There's only two sessions in the morning. And then we've extended the lunch hour. So the lunch hour is like 90 minutes long to encourage people to, you know, pair up and go get out of the space, get into the fresh air and uh, grab some lunch together and kind of digest and talk about what, what we talked about in the morning and then later in the afternoon as well. There's There are breaks between. Uh, and we've secured – you know some partnerships with restaurants in the 300 block of North Queen to to provide conference attendees with discounts on, for lunch. So you know there are a few restaurants that have said, yeah, that's great. You know if, we'll give you some coupons and you can give these to the, the people. So it's just to encourage people to get out, walk around, kind of um, get out of the you know really just get out of the space and then and then be refreshed and come back in for three presentations in the afternoon. And then the whole thing wraps up with a half hour sort of breakdown, where depending on where the conversations go, you know. Um, I'm, I'm envisioning just a, a wide open discussion at that point, reflection on the day, uh, and you know what w- what made the most impact. The next thing I, I, I was thinking was creatives sometimes have a short attention span, so you kind of answered it with uh, people having more of an interactive kind of kind of thing. Have you thought about putting any? auxiliary activities into the day like um a creative challenge that with competition for the you know when they're out on that break talking to people they could form a team and yeah not for the creative idea not for this one i mean wh- one of the things that we're doing is we're thinking about a a hands-on um creative retreat mm-hmm. in the spring to complement this event um and so we've been sort of you know we've been sort of um 
pushing ideas that are more hands on and interact and not interactive necessarily, but more hands on um, out to that event. And so, and this one, we just, I just know from being at these things that you know each session is going to fly by. Right. Um, and as far as attention span goes, I mean, we certainly thought about that when we were selecting speakers. Some of the folks that we've seen, if if you've seen Amanda Kemp speak before, she will. She will keep your attention. Uh, you've had her on the we program. Had her on the show, and we were just sucked right in. <laughs> right. Um, and so, you know, Eric Goldstein is one of our, our speakers uh, who's an incredibly clever guy. And so, so just as from that perspective, we're really excited about the speakers themselves because we feel like we have a really top, you know, high-quality, top-notch panel of speakers who will – who are really good at doing that, at, at, you know, at engaging an audience. So that's that's I guess our strategy if we have one. And I'd say too that I'm I'm trying to replay the speakers in my I don't know about Allison, but you know, Andrew does trainings himself, so I'm thinking he'll bring some of that understanding Absolutely. to the thing. And Chad is a professional speaker, um, in a way. And then Amanda Kemp is a professor and so she knows how to present things. And then uh, Eric Goldstein's also a, a professor. Who am I missing there? I know Allison does, you know, consulting and she does um, creative coaching work and that sort of thing. So I don't have any reservations about her ability to. So we're hoping that they crap. bring that that understanding and that that. And we'll leave it up to them really to to maintain the audience. It's not us for for eight hours, you know, talking at you. Good thing, probably. <laughs> I was trying to cope with the joke. <laughs> so, well, it seems like you, you guys have got a really good handle on how to direct something like this. Well, we're hoping so. I mean, this is really an experiment. Um, yeah. There isn't anything like it that that we can compare it to locally uh, that I know of. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe I've just missed it. I mean, this isn't you know, la- the launch music conference is. They have panels and workshops and panels, and this isn't a panel. Um, this is more more geared toward the specific stories and resources that each speaker will be bringing to the table to bring a, a perspective on igniting your creative fire, you know, and how to get yourself into that spot where you can where you can be inspired and then actually live out, you know, move toward living out those passions. So, but we don't know how it's going to play out because. You know, we haven't done it before, and and uh, and we don't know of anything that's really terribly comparable to it that's happening here locally, especially around this topic. How wide of a area reach are you looking to draw people in from? Well, we're hoping to to draw from Central Pennsylvania. Um, you know, Harrisburg, York, Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster is obviously our biggest target. Uh, we're from here. We support this community, and we we. Um, we're partnering with the Candy Factory, who's obviously a big supporter of the community, and and some other folks who are um, some other folks who are sponsoring the event are primarily Lancaster, uh, with the exception of of a company called the USIC, which is out of York, but it's a web based um, creative co op marketplace. It's a really fascinating concept. It's it deals with collaborative consumption and this the the new economy of buying services from people. From individual from individuals, and as a creative person, I can offer services through the USIC in a way that um, that I it's very targeted to other creatives. It's like a it's like an exchange. Those guys are out of York, um, but they cover the whole mid state and and a little bit beyond right now with what they're doing. So we have Lemon Street Market who's sponsoring the event. Mosaic Presents is supporting us. Uh, the PA Guild of Craftsmen, which of course is Lancaster up on Queen Street, and the Candy Factory along with the USIC. So, yeah, it's a Lancaster heavy thing, but but we've been reaching out to our friends in York, and we've been reaching out to some folks in Harrisburg as well um, through this and through the through the twenty four hour plays, which we'll talk about in a little while. And we're hoping to draw some of the some interest in from really the the Tri City area, the York Lancaster Harrisburg uh, area. Okay, you're both creatives. You're doing a convention. For creatives, so I'm going to challenge you create creatively here. Hypothetically, should everything go successful and you continue to do this in five years, what do you envision for creativity, Con? We're at the convention center. Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a big name person that's coming in who's drawing people. Someone you've heard about, we've all heard about, who's coming in. And it's going to be the keynote. 
Uh, it'll be tracks. I'd love to see tracks so that if I'm a writer, uh, you know, maybe it's two days, maybe it's a two day conference and I can take three to seven sessions on just writing if I want. Or I can t- pick something that's more generic, like a you know business for creatives, or you know ideation, or something like that. And so I can I can see tracks for sure. Steve nailed it with a keynote, you know, a big name keynote, and the convention center. And I could certainly see us doing a multiple day thing. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Well, we're going to head to break, and we come back. We'll have more with the guys from the Wood Stove House. Hey, everybody. We're here at Penn Cinema to find out what everyone's been talking about. Excuse me. Why do you choose Penn Cinema? I like the seats. They're really comfy. (laughs) They're a lot nicer than most other places. Even my house. (laughs) Oh, this place is great. I mean, it's popcorn. Got some, uh, we got a slushy machine over there. We got three clocks. Three clocks for the Lidditz, the Lancaster, and the effort of time, just in case, you know, you don't know what time it is in your area. That's why I love this place. They, they, They think about everybody, you know. Very friendly. Has a nicer environment. It's clean and comfortable. It feels independent. You know, like, it doesn't feel like part of a system. Like, it feels like as big as it is and as polished as it is that it feels independent, you know? Bigger screen, better quality. So it's really close. It's very clean. We come here all the time. What do you like about Penn Cinema? The seats are my favorite thing. Very comfortable. On the rump. (laughs) 3D IMAX, the whole shebang. It has a down-home feel, and we love the atmosphere that Penn has created. He really tries to take into account what people want in a theater. It's really clean, and the seats are really comfy. Yeah, I like the seats. It's the best movie theater to come to. Well, you've heard what they have to say. Now come see for yourself. Check out Penn Cinema for first-class movies in a first-rate theater. Located at 541 Airport Road in Lidditz, PA. And we're back on the Linecast with Steve Carlson and Jason Mundock. Guys, last year you were on talking about 24-hour plays. and That was almost a year ago, exactly, or something like yeah. that. It was, it was October last year. Um I went. Becky was with us then. She went as well. And we had a great time. What was the turnout like? We packed it. I mean, we sold out, what, two days ahead of showtime. Mm -hmm. Sold out. We had people calling you to see if they could act in it. We had people coming by the the rehearsal space the night of the meeting, the Friday night. Hey, are there any tickets? No, I'm sorry. There aren't any tickets. Got people approaching me like, when is this thing? I got to get my ticket. So, uh the turnout was great. Um, so this year we're moving to a larger space, Community Mennonite Church of Lancaster on Orange Street, downtown Lancaster, and we're we're hoping to fill that place as well. So this, with the new venue being in a church, it brings up something that um, I noticed during the first one, and it was, you didn't know what kind of content you were going to get. And, and while I personally wasn't offended by any of the content, it was definitely more progressive than what I think Lancaster County is, is used to. What uh, kind of restrictions, no, even not restrictions is the right word, maybe um, parameters Parameters yeah. have you put on the put on the stuff this year? So I, I think that that kind of typifies a lot of the progression that Jason and I and Suzanne have, have gone through as, you know, involved in this kind of stuff. When we approached the 24-hour project last year, we went in there the first meet. Hey, we're not theater P. We don't. Hey, come and talk to us if you have a suggestion, all that kind of stuff. We've been through it once already, and I think we're gonna grab it a little bit more. We were, I think, a little hesitant to to say, "Oh, you can't do this. You can do this," and that kind of thing. So, one of our writers went there and went, you know, pretty far down the road of of pushing some limits and. And it being in a church, there are going to be a lot of people um, from the congregation that are going to be there. Uh, we're certainly not going to tell people, okay, you know, we're in it to be careful and all that kind of stuff. But we want to lay out a few things for folks so they understand that we, while we're not trying to prescribe what they can do, we don't want it to be offensive. I mean, you can't help but offend somebody no matter what you're doing in the creative world. But we don't want... S- to well, go that yeah. far. You know? for shock the sake for, of yeah, shock yeah, that's shock absolutely. Sake. And I want to make a couple points pretty clear too. First of all, the um, the church itself, we're renting the space from the church. It's not any in any way connected with the church uh, in terms of it being a church related event. So, 
So we do have some, you know, it's it's a space that we know that we're obviously involved with the church there. Uh, we've done, we've had rehearsals in there for other events. There's some other communities, groups that use that space, like the Music for Everyone Chorus, and different people use that space for different things uh, that aren't all necessarily church-related. So um, our use of the space in this context is, you know, renting a space to use for the event. Um, the folks who uh, run the church are, are f- very familiar with what we've done in the past um, and um, and are cool with the idea of doing it in that space and trust that we'll respect it. The second thing is that even if we didn't move to a church, um, even if we weren't going to move into that space, if we were going to do it again at the candy factory at another you know neutral space, we would have applied the same parameters um, because we felt like that, you know, just from the the perspective of kids, it, this isn't not for little kids, and it and it's not something that we would ever do in this for this project, Langster Twenty Four Hour Plays. But uh, but you know it's, there are there you know there could be teenagers that come, there could be you know younger kids, twelve and thirteen years old, and we just want to make it appropriate for the masses uh, because we think it's an awesome idea, and sometimes that there can be you know if you go too far, it, it can just it can just put a bad taste in people's mouths. Now, I, I need to apologize to any of our newer listeners who, who missed the guys last year. Um, I did, we didn't go over what the 24-hour plays are. Could you give us a brief synopsis, Steve? So what, what we're going to do is we're going to bring together a pool of six writers, playwrights, six directors, and 20 actors. We'll all meet together on a Friday night. The um, – actors will present themselves to everybody the writers will choose the actors they want to write a play for the act, the writers will spend all night writing the play finish last year they finished around 5 30 in the morning they handed off their work to us and we made uh, copies of scripts directors come in the next morning they read the scripts take an hour to do so they choose the script they want to direct for and then the actors come in and away away everything goes that evening uh, we have a performance for the public so it's uh, six plays produced in 24 hours. They're all about 10 minutes long, and there's one performance of the plays. Um, you don't get to see them again because that's part of the process is that they're a 24-hour product. So what was the reaction from the public after everything was over last year? It was overwhelmingly positive. People were pumped. I mean, we had some people that we really respect coming up to us and saying that was the greatest thing of the year. Like, uh, people were really excited about it. They understood the process. They understood what all the the actors, writers, directors had gone through over that 24-hour period. And it was just really exciting. The the plays were solid. The space was great. It looked beautiful. Rod Shoemaker and, and Brian McKee took care of the space for us. It was a perfect night for theater in, uh, in Lancaster. And as far as I'm concerned, I thought it was wonderful. Tim Baum playing crazy music with his turntable guitar playing, <laughs> whatever that was. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. And, and it, it's difficult for us to look at this year and say, oh, we have to do that exact same thing again because we can't do that exact same thing again. We're going to try to produce another wonderful, awesome evening of theater, but we, we you know, it's hard not to say, oh, we need to have that bit because that bit worked. And we need that bit because that bit worked. We need to have it be a fresh new thing that's exciting for everybody to attend. Well, with the new space, uh, you obviously have room for more people. What other kind of benefits do you have from the new venue? Well, the new venue will also allow Tim Baum, the musician, to maybe play a little bit with what he's going to present. I know Jason's talked to him about about that. We also, um, I was in a conversation with Rod Shoemaker from Shoemaker PDT. Um, he's excited about getting his fingers on some stuff, and he's got some toys that he um, is going to present to us as, as possible things to enliven the space a little bit. Um, our goal, I think, is to take you know the, the the sanctuary there is a pretty neutral space, white walls, no real adornments or or um, decorations or anything. We're gonna have shoemaker come in and and transform the space. That's what he does, and we want people to walk in and and say, "Wow, I'm not. I go to church here. This doesn't look like the church anymore. Uh, this looks like a theater." And so that that's what we're looking. That's what we're looking to do. I think one of the main advantages of this new space. Um, outside of capacity is uh, it's really a performance space. Uh, it was um, that space was used 
it was not built as a church. It was a ballet studio for a while. It was a uh, theater of uh, seven sister had done. I just found that out, had done some work in there in that way long time ago in the past. So, and it's designed, to, it has a stage and it has seating that's designed to, you know, for the seats to face the stage uh, with the candy factory. You know, we were converting um, an open plan office area, office space, essentially an old warehouse, but we were converting that into a theater. So we had some issues with uh, uh, sight lines. Uh, you know, we couldn't seat. We could have actually fit more chairs. We had 100, 115 chairs in the space, but we could have fit more chairs, but you physically couldn't have seen the stage from where we would have put the chairs. So we did lose space. Um, and the, the the parts where we put the chairs were very crowded. It was very intimate. Uh, in in this space, uh, you know, it's it's essentially a performance space every week, uh, and so there we know how many ch- people fit in there comfortably, uh, and so we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about those sort of logistical issues. The other thing is that the building is as well. It's heated. It's heated. <laughs> uh, which <laughs> we, had, we had actors up in their jackets. Totally freezing while they were, pre- were rehearsing these pieces because they were up on the third floor of the Keppel Building. You know, there's right. no heat up there. Um, so yeah, there's heat. Yeah, in through this through the day, we um, these teams, uh, I'll call them these different teams of actors and, and and directors, have to go and find quiet space to rehearse in. And um, it, in the Candy Factory, in the Keppel Building, the Candy Factory was the heated space. <laughs> so once, so if you weren't on stage rehearsing. You know, for your your sliver of time, your hour, then you were literally in various places throughout the couple building, and it was it was a very cold weekend. Yeah. So it it will be very it will be very comfortable. Plus, we have access to kitchens. We have access to um, some sort of chill space. There's a, there's a there's a space where there's a few couches uh, and some carpeting. It's just like a really comfortable place for people to relax. So it will definitely be a better environment for the yeah, for the crew. You know, to add something to what we were talking about too, like putting some parameters on some of the content, um, we'd we'd also like to present to the writers, like, hey, your actors need to go off book when you write this, and so please keep that in mind as you go. Like, give them a chance to go off book. Um, we had a, nearly every well, with the exception of one play, went off book last year, and it. If you saw that play, you could understand why. It was a very complex kind of meta play that really had little narrative. It didn't have really a narrative through it. So it was really difficult for the actors to to commit that to memory over the short period of time that they had to work on it. So that's another thing, too, maybe to think about as we present ourselves to the the writers. What type of audience do you think is more most attracted to this type of event because in something like this where you've got so much creativity you've got a short period of time you can come up with funny things you can come up with really dramatic things or you come up with really artistic things and each of those kind of has a different kind of audience what type of person have you found really enjoys to to come to the 24-hour play i mean that's that's a tough question because i mean if you look at the crew I mean, we have this crew of 45 people automatically you get a an audience right from friends and family and things but i think that people who like lancaster last year when when jason got up there was like hey you know what we weren't sure if if this town was ready for this kind of thing and and we filled the house and they were ready so it's it's people who maybe go to first friday who are looking for something that's a little bit different they don't necessarily always go down gallery row they're looking for for something that's a little bit offbeat um, they may go to the Fulton and support the Fulton and some of the more quote unquote conventional, um, artistic forms that are in town, but it's just people who want to be, who want to see something that's, that's a little bit different, um, from what is being offered right now in, in Lancaster. And, and that's not a criticism at all at, at what's out there. Cause there's so much amazing stuff. And this is just one more thing that people can enjoy and, and is challenging for people like, wow, okay, these people just wrote this and they did this and this is awesome and I love this space and this is great and wow. Like that's what we want um, to hear from people when they're when they're done. Not to put words in their mouth, but... Well, wow is only one word, so... Yeah, one <laughs> word. Wow, uh, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I didn't, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of it's about uh, um, curiosity. You know, I, I'm 
a fascinated being part of it last year was one of the most amazing things because I've been a musician all my life and so I've been part of this creative process but to to work on an event where I'm not really part of that the creative process of it but we're really just setting the stage and creating an environment for them to work in you know you build up in your head what what it's going to be like you can't not and to see what these folks extremely talented people came up with in 24 hours i mean yeah it was it was nerve-wracking from the pr- producer perspective because we sold out a show before we had met anyone who was going to be in it i mean we knew a handful of people that were going to be in it but we, between the two of us we probably only knew a half dozen people of the 30 who oh. were part of the actual cast um so we hadn't even met a majority of the people who were going to be in it, but we had, we sold this out and our reputation was on the line. So <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. It was one of the most nerve wracking events I've ever been involved with, like from a physical <laughs> physical illness perspective. <laughs> but um, but for me, it's like oh, it's like it's sort of like the car wreck thing where you just you can't not look. Like I want to see what these people come up with. I want to see what when you give them a challenge. I want to see the magic happen. You know, and I mean, there, there's, and that you said it like the magic happened. We, we were there. Uh, I think we each had like an hour and a half, two hour break during the day or something. But we were there the whole time, so we watched all these people struggle with this work, and it was just fabulous. I mean, we saw each play four times, like it, the best seat in the house without a doubt. And we, in terms of audience, we talk about audience a lot, and in, in terms of like how do we reach more people how do we reach people to bring them into to our audience and and while we love to see our friends come out to these shows it would be absolutely wonderful if we looked out into the audience and didn't recognize a single person because that would mean that we were starting to reach out further and further and further and you know something's something's happening that we i don't not that we can't control but we just don't yeah i know what you mean it's is out there um, because we've talked about it. the same people that are going to come to our show will go to series four to two shows that'll go to the creative work shows that'll go to somebody else's show. And the struggle for all these groups is to get those people who don't go to the shows that, that yeah. we, that we produce with. To reach out beyond the borders of Lanc- the Lancaster creative scene and widen that, you know, widen that circle a bit is a, is a real challenge, but it's also a real important goal. Can't help but think Steve was saying. To me directly, don't come. I don't want to. No, that's. I, I mean, like the audience. That, no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> don't make absolutely me cry over not. here, man. <laughs> no, you know what I mean, though. You yeah, know, like we we certainly want all, our, all everyone we know to go, but um, no question. Just sit where you can't see them. No. <laughs> Just give you a hard time. But that's why we, you know, we reached out, like, um, you know, through some of the contacts that Jason's met in in York. We've we've tried to reach out to you know, broaden the pool of actors and writers and directors that we um, had from last year. And a lot of people are back. A lot of people have conflicts and moved away and, and have other things going. So they're not going to be involved, but there are names there that, again this year. We don't, we don't know who they are. Um, and they have sent us their information and there's some people with a lot of experience yeah. that, that are interested in wow. doing this project with us. And it's really exciting to see who these people are. And it's going to be like last year. It's it's fun. Like, hi, I'm Steve. How I, I'm, yeah, whoever, whoever. I you know, and you you've seen their name and on our Google Doc, you know, for weeks, and you're just like, you can't even imagine who they are. You know, one of the greatest things that came out of the 24 hour plays the first time we did it, in my opinion, was the relationships that we've developed with folks who were involved with it who we didn't know prior. I mean. Uh, some of the folks who are speaking at our conference, we met because of the 24-hour plays. Um, some of the people we've collaborated with since then, we met because of the 24-hour plays. And it goes beyond Woodstove House. We see pe- we look out into the community now and we see people working together that we know didn't know each other prior to that weekend. And that's a really fulfilling part of this whole thing, is, is bringing those people together and making those connections. Well, gentlemen, we're just about out of time. We have two... Great things coming up for you guys. Can you give us the details for both of them? Steve, could you do 24-hour? Yeah. Sure. Could you do Creativity Con? I'll start with Creativity Con. So it's uh, Saturday, October 20th at the Candy Factory. That's on Queen Street, 323 North Queen Street. 
um, you can go online to creativitycon.com uh, and register for the conference. Uh, please register in advance if you're coming so we know. Um, the the uh, tuition for the conference is $125, but there are also some discounts being offered through some groups. So if you're a member, member of the Candy Factory, check with Ann Kirby. If you're a member of the USIC, we have um, some discounts being offered to USIC members. Uh, and um, unfortunately, you missed the early birds um, uh, time period that's that's already expired. Uh, so check it out, and if you have any questions, you can email me, Jason, at woodstovehouse.com, uh, and I will get back to you as soon as I as soon as I can. That's October 20th at the Candy Factory Creativity Con 2012. And the 24-hour plays will be November 3rd. That's a Saturday. The performance is at 7 p.m., and tickets are $15. And the space will be at uh, Community Mennonite Church of Lancaster, which is 328, 328 West, West Orange Street in Lancaster. And um, you can get your tickets from uh, – you can link to tickets on our website, yeah. com. And Lancaster24.com will take you right to the 24-hour plays page. Uh, tickets will, will go on sale Monday, October 8th. I don't know when this program is going to be um, published. But. Okay, so tickets will be uh, will be available when this, when this program airs. All right. Well, Steve, Jason, always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. Thank, Thank you very you, much. David. Thanks for having us back. All right. We hope you've been enjoying the Lancast. This episode was produced by myself, David Moulton, with show notes by Keith and Lawrence Lesser. All pertinent links to this episode can be found in the show notes at thelancast.com. If you specifically liked this episode, we ask that you consider making a donation. Every little bit helps. Even a dollar a show can keep us going. If you'd like to help support us, you can do so by going to thelancast.com slash donate. And don't forget to subscribe in iTunes and tell a friend about the show. So, for the Linecast, I'm David Moulton. And I'm Keith Slesser. Asking, are you in the cast? Please silence your electronic communication devices. I can't believe I was the one to forget. <laughs> <laughs>